Oh, hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I thought I'd give you a little bit of the behind the scenes today. Um, I don't know, maybe it's kind of interesting to just sort of see how a, uh, you know, a New York hat salesman who works for uh, the oldest hat shop in New York, um, you know, how, how I live and, you know, what it's like being here. I'm in Queens, Queens, New York, right above Queens Boulevard. It's like a main artery that, uh, you know, it leads to the bridge that goes to Manhattan and stuff. Um, it's a lot of cool, like, ethnic foods out here, like, very, uh, you know, authentic, like, you know, Thai restaurants by Thai people, Sichuan Chinese people, and people from, you know, from Beijing, and, you know, there's, like, four places like that, you know, where they, like, pull Chinese noodles, like, in front of you, and it's, like, really, really, like, authentic, uh, you know, places. The Indian food is for real. The pizza joints we have, like, world class. There's a place here called Nick's Pizza. N-I-C-K. Nick's Pizza. Take a look at that. Let's take a look at some of the photos of their pies. It's, like, it's incredible. They have the, you know, like the brick oven and then it's all, like, kind of, like, a little bit burnt, the pie. And they use that real cheese, you know, that super white stuff, you know, that fake, like, yellow, orange, slimy New York slice. It's, like, yeah. Believe me, it's the best. Living out here is the best. It's the, really cool. And um, there's just a lot of stuff to, to see. And uh, it's always a lot of cool, uh, freaky people in the city that I know, and uh, things to do, museums, parks. Uh, and if you want to go you know, to, a, to a farm or something like that, there's all kinds of stuff like that. You know? Uh, farm, they call it a farm museum, though, you know, but you could, you could go, like, very close out of town and be on the, the beach, uh, like my folks live in Long Beach. It's about a 40-minute train ride from here, um, so that's not bad. You sit on the train, you know, you watch a little YouTube, and then you're there, um, and, um, you know, they're right on the beach, and that's great, and it doesn't look like uh, the city at all there super close. Um, you look at a map, you know, see where Forest Hills is, and then look at Long Beach, so super close to the city. It's about maybe, I don't know, 25 minute ride by subway, and uh, maybe less to just get over the bridge to 59th Street, but we're very close, and we're also very close to the beach and, you know, to other stuff, to Long Island. Um, but anyway, yeah, the first thing I generally do before I start one of these videos is uh, I, I turn my amp on. Uh, you got to warm up the amp. See the, see the light on there? So the tubes have to actually heat up a little bit. They're heating up right now. Uh, I turn on my switch, my power switch, and I let the, the tubes just kind of bake a little bit. Uh, and I plug in my microphone. I got a stereo mic here. It's a Shure MV88, I think. And uh, I pull it here on a music stand right now, a black music st a stand that Scott gave me. One of my uh, oldest and dearest viewers, Scott Raymond, actually gave me a really cool Ovation guitar and, um, and a music stand that I use every single day. Thank you, Scott. You are a gentleman. Um, I wanted to show you something really cool. Um, yeah, while the amp uh, cooks and stuff. But yeah, I usually bring this a little closer so that it covers up the, the tape. See the tape up there? Yeah, that looks gnarly. So I go like that. Yeah. Sometimes there's a bad glare there, but I like to show, uh, show my little dolls, you know, my Gumby. Pirate Gumby. This freaky guy that my son refuses to play with because it, it just sort of doesn't scare him. He just thinks it's really weird, you know. Um, he's like, Dad, you can have that one. And then, um, yeah, and then I got a Yeti over here too, you know. Gotta have a Yeti, somebody said once. So I like to, that to be seen. I also have my painting here by Nikita, very nice viewer who sent me this photo of a painting, a nice frame, kind of black enamel, wood or something, yeah. And I've got a painting by Wes. This is the 
cool Wes Griffin picture. So it's my station ID thing. Sort of, yeah, it's a picture of me and a guitar there, I think. Yeah. Purple and green guitar. Alright. Pull that out a little bit more. So that's what I do. I set the uh, I set the camera up. Uh, warm up the amp. Generally I'll open this up a bit. Open the blinds, close the window. I'll get out a cord. Today I'll use this gold cable. Sometimes I go wireless too. Just depends on if the wireless is charged or not. Get the cable. That plugs down here into my Wawa pedal. Okay. Then I choose an axe. You gotta choose a guitar. I generally choose the light blue one or the silver one because they're my newest. Uh, and they need the less the least adjustments because I haven't been pounding on them for that many uh, years yet, you know, or months. So I'll choose one of them generally. If I'm alone, sometimes I choose the little red squire in the corner there. And I lay down on my bed while I'm surfing YouTube or answering emails. I'll play the squire without plugging in. I'll just kind of you know, run through stuff and just kind of, you know, uh, keep my fingers, fingers nimble, play around, kind of like a toy, you know. Then I'll choose a hat. That's the next thing, I always choose a hat. Then I'll tune up. Hats are behind the music stand here. Got a couple of boxes and a couple of small stacks upside down. Choose the black hat. It's my lightweight one and it's, uh, I don't know, it's mellow. Goes with my black sweatshirt. And then I'll tune up. Got my stroke tuner down there. A little sharp. While I'm tuning up, I gotta tell you uh, about my amazing family, um, whom I've been uh, spending every single day with uh, for the last year since March. Uh, I've been home with my wife uh, and my son. Uh, I'm 54, my son is nine, so. I've got a pretty young guy at home uh, for an old guy like me. And he uh, keeps me on my toes, you know, so to speak. Keeps me young. Oops. You ever do that? Tune the wrong, hold, hold the wrong tuning peg? <laughs> I just did that because I was talking and I was distracted. Anyway, um, my family, my amazing wife, she bought me this cool gift, uh, actually my wife and my son. And it's, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm kind of like a, a you know, this is glaring like crazy. Let's bring you guys in more. So. So I'm closer to the mic, first of all. Yeah, there we go. The tape, <laughs> there we go, all right. All right, now uh, I'm a chopaholic, like big time. Um, there's a really cool viewer, uh, Steve Collins, who visited once from England, and he said he was gonna bring me some you know, British chocolate, because I'd mentioned it once before, I'm really into it, I'm constantly eating chocolate. And he gave me the best, like, you know, maybe like this entire box filled with like giant Cadbury bars and then those, uh, the ones with the bubbles inside, Arrow, you know, the Arrow, the green Arrow, dude, the green mint Arrow, the regular Arrow, all these other weird ones, like there's someone with the lion on it and the flaky one and all these caramel ones, crazy Cadbury, like Cadbury everything. He hooked it up. And um, I've had Cadbury, Cadbury here. You know, that, well, it's the big deal. It sucks. Turns out Cadbury in America is like Hershey or something, or Nestle. He's bought the name or something. So it's not the same stuff. It's just like Hershey's crap, you know, cold cut. But yeah, yeah, the Hershey's chocolate is like, it's okay, but 
once you start, you know, trying anything else, it's better. Like even Dove bars, you know, they're great. It's amazing. So what they got me, my wife got me the Chocolate of the Month Club. So every month there's some kind of like really cool, exotic, like really nice chocolate that comes. Um, this time I'd open it online. The Chocolate of the Month Club. How awesome is that? I think this month it's supposed to be dark chocolate assortment or dark chocolate truffles. It's got a whole, uh, like a, a schedule, like a menu, you know, what's Let's check it out here. Let's check it out here. This is so awesome. All right. Finest chocolates here is Medford, Oregon. Come on, anything from Oregon rules, right? We've got those like uh, organic blueberries and stuff there. And, like, everything is like natural and farm, farmed out. Chocolate gift box, milk chocolate. Oh, it's a milk chocolate. So the dark chocolate one is coming next. Okay, also, yeah, yeah, this is last month. Last month was late. So I called them and they said they were gonna expedite and send this one out to you. So this I got is the chocolate, the milk chocolate one, the dark chocolate one could be here like in a week, in two weeks, sometime during this coming month. So, all right. This is actually February's, not, uh, not March. All right, let's see, this is what we've got. We got, Chocolate cream, all right, you can see that. So this is more like, it's not a truffle collection, it's more like just chocolates, yeah. Oh, but they're excellent, it's super quality. Molten chocolate, salted caramel, hazelnut cups, dolce de leche, mm -hmm. solid medallions, almond cups, chocolate cream, almond truffles, cream seashells. So this is all milk chocolate, like, you know, what do you call those kind of chocolates? Bonbons, all bonbons. I'm not going to eat them here actually, but uh, I actually want to crack them with my son. My little boy is going to get to eat the first one. And yeah, make him a promise. So he's going to get to eat the very, very first one. And my wife's going to get the second one, and I get to eat the third one. So I guess I'm going to share it with the fam because. We have been spending so much time together, and my wife's been working super hard since the pandemic, too. And these guys really deserve it. Uh, my son, too, working remotely from school is just like super hard. It's uh, not nearly as easy as going to regular school, although it's more pleasant in a way, because now you don't have to wait in line and go to the cafeteria and get on the bus and all that, you know, junky stuff. And you don't have to be away from mom and dad and family and the warmth of your house and your junk food and your pajamas. But, you know, sitting at the desk, just sitting there all day long and just staring and just sitting and saying, yeah, yes, uh-huh, you know, talking to the teacher that way. It's just, uh, it's hard. It's hard to keep to maintain attention and focus, where generally in school people prompt you, you know, pay attention, everybody eyes front, you know. Um, they have, you know, these big groups of little squares of kids that are all watching and they just don't get the same attention. So, yeah, and they don't get the socialization either. They don't get to mix with other people and watch their manners and learn how to interact with others and make friends and, you know, all this stuff that sucked in school, you know, is gone, but all the stuff that was kind of good too, like learning how to deal with people, it's just, you know, so it's all on hold now, and um, yeah, it's been a little rough, it gets boring, you know, um, I don't think he was bored that much, but, you know, even I'm starting to get a little bit bored, the pandemic is starting to, like, you know, you know, after a year, so, um, yeah, these chocolates are for everybody, not just me. Anyway, um, yeah, next thing I do is I always tune up. Take it off mute. Mm -hmm. 
like to introduce a the long, long time ago. I can still remember how the music used to make me smile. And if I had my chance, I could make those people dance. And maybe they'd be happy for a while. Here it comes. But February made me shiver. Every paper I delivered, bad news on the doorstep. Couldn't take one more step. I can't remember if I cried. And nothing made the people cry. And something touched me deep inside. The day. The moon.
from James Dean. piece if you like, Frank, okay? Alright, I'm taking the chopper with me. Okay, make sure you give one to mom too, okay? Alright, I'll, I'll give one to my mother. Okay, thank Can you close the door so I don't blast her out? Alright. Thanks, Frank. Anyway, the two of us always were, uh, always crack on that song because it's the corniest song. Like, each, each lyric is cornier than the next. Like, he thinks it's hilarious. Sweet perfume. And, you know, like, each line. Eight miles high and we've over. He loves making fun of it, so he's he's already satirical and he's like nine years old. I love it. But um, I don't even know why I'm making this video. I'm basically I just wanted to show my chocolates um, because I have a chocolate of the month club. Um, it started in December. I got my January, and the February never came. So the February and the March are coming now in this month. So. It's been a while, so I'm really psyched about it, you know. Like Christmas uh, present rush is kind of over now, but I don't know. It doesn't get me much to get excited. Well, chocolates. You guys can send me lots of chocolates to JJ's if you want. Um, it's not a problem, as long as there's no nuts in there. But, um, you know, if you like me, I mean. But if you hate me, you could also send chocolates and poison them. I'll eat those, too. I don't care. Excuse huh? me. We have a bake sale here. Oh, a bake sale? Can I try one? Mm hmm. Mmm, okay. We, I'm going to take the one with the nuts because I yeah, know you're allergic to nuts. Yeah, we okay? recommend the ones with nuts. Alright, I'm going to try this almond uh, hazelnut cup thing. Yeah. It actually looks really good. Alright, let's give the, give the fans one. Oh, you guys want one? Mm. Yeah. Take I say I recommend this one too. Yeah. Here you go, guys. How would it taste? You don't have to eat the nut if you don't like it. Okay, there you go. Right. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. Now, how am I supposed to do a video now with the chocolate in my mouth? Yep. I'm going to choke on it. Okay. I didn't think about that. Um, I'll play guitar for a minute. And while I eat it. Thank you. 
talk a little bit about hats today, okay? We have an important subject to cover. I just don't know what it is yet. Um, what I really want to talk about, no, I do want to talk about something of the hat nature with you guys, okay? All right. This is the, um, the whole science of stretching. People are always thinking, you know, all right, I'm a 57.5, like my good, good buddy Alex, who um, is also a European dude who sometimes used to come to New York, you know, and uh, visit JJ's, and he was a big, big JJ's customer, walk-in customer, and I'd always help him. I was his man. So now occasionally he, he texts me or something, or emails JJ's, whatever, and I, I get the message. And, you know, we try to work out a sale, but um, through the online thing. You know, I've been telling there's a lot of sales, and, you know, you could catch some 50% off things if you, you, know, you try. But the um, point with Alex is he was always a little bit between sizes. The guy was a 57.5 or something. So he would buy, you know, a 58, and you'd think it was too big, or a 57, it was too tight, you know. And we would always be juggling these things, you know always, um, you know, recommend going bigger and tightening up, okay? There is a science to this stuff. And if you understand how the hat is built and what's inside of the hat, I think it will make things clearer to you to the point where you'll understand everything. Let me see if I could just do a little something here. Let's lower the light so I can serve some power. Okay, all right, here's the deal. Inside of the sweatband, at the very end of the sweatband, this last part here, the end part, not the leather here, the end, there's a little shiny tube there. You see how it's like different? Okay, a lot of you guys know what that is because I've spoken about it. Right in here, it's called the reed. Inside there, think of it as a wire. You know when wires have like, you know, that red covering or the blue covering and you, you know, you, you chew it off or you use a wire stripper? It's like that insulation, right? It's just like that. There's a wire in here, okay? The wire is what's responsible for this always having that round shape. Look, I try to squish it. It doesn't stay squished. Whoa, it bounces back, you know? It's the reed. The reed is always bouncing back to this oval shape. It's giving your hat structure and it's giving it this ovalness which keeps it looking like the real deal. It doesn't make it, f it keeps it from getting floppy and all like a vagrant's hat. It keeps it round, okay? Structure. When you try to stretch a hat, okay, you could use like the most force possible, you know, like a vice type tool, like some steel stuff, you know, with a big long handle through it, so you're cranking it with great strength and you're opening up this puny leather band, which is strong, but you could crank that sucker open with great, great strength where the leather has no chance, okay? What's happening is you're stretching it, you're stretching it, it's going past 57, it's 57.5, you brought it to 58 because you know it's going to contract a little, you brought it to 58 and a half, you stretch it to a 59. You're looking now, it looks like the band on the side might pop, so you stop at a 59.5, and you figure, okay, if it contracts or if whatever happens, at least it's going to be a little bigger the next day, right? Feels a little big. Huh? He walks out, it's contracted already, it feels better. Kev, you're a genius. Wow. He gets home, the next day the hat is a 57 again. After all that cranking, everything's open. Why is it a 57 again? Why did it contract from that 59 and a half all the way back to exactly where it started? It's the reed. Okay. The reed is a piece of fishing line, basically. Think of anybody who's a fisherman, think of very strong fishing line, you know, whatever you use to catch, like, I don't know, a blue marlin or something, you know, some thick stuff, right? And um, it could be a black marlin too. Not the wire leader, just the actual uh, the nylon thread, real thick and strong, okay? They make a ring out of that, okay? Here's the ring. Think of that ring as a piece of piano wire that you cannot stretch over your head. If your head's 57 and a half, that's a 57 wire. No matter what, it's not working. You're not stretching that hat because of the wire in there, okay? The piano wire, happens to be 
nylon and it's stretchy. So yes, it does stretch unlike a piece of piano wire which I don't know what happens to that. It might bend or kink or split or break. I don't know. Maybe it stretches. I'm not sure. The piece of nylon, the reed, what happens to it is it stretches, it expands, it expands, it expands, okay? Then it contracts and goes right back because it's that stuff, you know? It's meant to be like that. It's meant to flex and always come back. That's why this hat always keeps its shape. But when you stretch it, that thing is actually stretching, for real stretching. The felt doesn't stretch. You're just really redistributing it. You're getting less height, and that felt is going to the hole in here. You're getting less brim. The brim's getting shorter, and it's going to enlarging this hole. But the reed itself is stretching. But then it, right back. You know what this stuff is like. Like if you took some fishing line, you pulled it you know, in a vise, it would either break or it would stretch, or it would stretch to a certain point before breaking point. That's what's happening here. It stretches, then it goes right back. No matter how good the stretch is, no matter how good he is at you know, getting rid of the, the stretch marks, the thing that's inside there, the reed, is preventing it from stretching at all. It doesn't stretch. People who work in hat shops, you know, they stretch it, they stretch it, it makes you happy, you walk out and it fits for five minutes. Stretching doesn't work, okay? If you think it works, you're, you're kidding yourself because I know you've gotten stretches and it feels good and the next day it's, it's gone. Um, that's what happens. Okay, the only way to prevent this is to clip the reed, okay? The reed is in that last bit there, the little tube. If you cut it, the tension's gone, okay? So you just kind of cut that thing. The tension between the reed is gone. The reed is still there. You can remove it, but that'll give the hat less structure. It'll be totally soft, you know? Just clip it. Clip the reed. Get rid of that little insulation. Cut it with a little X-Acto knife. Underneath, you'll see the, 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 the uh, nylon thread. Clip it with a scissor, a good, sharp, pointy scissors, real deal scissors or a needle nose, uh, what do you call it, wire clipper kind of thing, snip it, then stretch. People ask me, should I cut the reed or should I stretch? Should I only need this much? You gotta do both. You gotta cut the reed so you can stretch, so the stretch holds, so it doesn't hold for five seconds. Get it? You guys get it, right? All right, you cut the reed, then you're able to start stretching your hats. You don't even need a stretcher. You can stretch it over your knee like this, stretch. Just pull, but don't Jerk, you know, pull it, increase pressure, increase pressure, increase pressure, you know, long way only, okay? The other thing is you could do it across the chest. Remember chest pulls, those three string, uh, three springs with the plastic handles? I used to work in my dad's sporting goods store. They had all these, uh, by AMC, they had all these home gym products before gyms were popular. People used to go to health spa and clubs and stuff. They had these, like a wheel. You would do like this, a wheel on the ground. They had a chest pull. They had the bowl worker, which you could, you know, push like this. You could push like that. You could push it in the bowl worker. It had two cables you could stretch. Chest pulls. Then they had uh, hand grips, hand grip, chest pulls. Oh, and they had names for all those things, too. All those extra sit-up bars, and we used to sell all those dumb gym things, chin-up bars. But anyway, cut the reed, guys. Just cut it. Then you can start stretching like this by... You do it every day. You know? Okay. Crease, think of this as cardio. Think of it as in, like curls, you know? And you're much stronger than me, so don't, don't rip the hat apart. 